Hi guys, welcome back to Bunny Design. Just would like to find this. Um, I thought I'd work in, I thought I would work in um, um, my little book of watercolours. Now I've stripped it because I'm revamping it and putting it into um, one of these um, photo albums by Paper Chase. Um, and the reason for that is I don't like this this chunkiness. Now it is the same size, but there's a bit of give here. And what I did to my original one was I broke the spine. So this is like my original one. And I bent the spine so that that was level with the papers. And that gave me a fatter, a fatter one, but it was also a rounder. So it's quite difficult to do. Um, and you just have to kind of bend it over and make lots of creases. Um, because I've put the, I've got the one set of the peerless watercolors, so they're going to go in this book as well. But if you notice the middle, there's nothing in there. I put paper in there, so it will be as thick as it's going to be. Um, they're not attached yet, but we will have my Derwent watercolor pencil 72, ink tens 72, and what I've done with this particular one is there's um, a place for photograph here. Just give me a second. Let me just see if I can make sure that. Automatic focus is off. That's fine. Um, so there's um, where the plastic is. This is uncut at the minute so you would photograph in this side and you would also there's a piece of plastic in the middle here if you can see that you'd also put a, a photograph in that side so you'd have a photograph in there and a photograph in here so what i've done is i've cut the side here that seals it so it's opened um it's opened that, that seal and then I've cut across the top and that's given me, in effect, three pages. So you can tell the difference. That's the first one that's thin there. Then we have a bit of a thicker one that's in the middle and then there's another thin one. And then the process starts again, a thin one, a thicker one and a thin one and what I've done here is I've put I've missed a few pages but then I put them here so when I open it instead of putting the first page at that side I put it here so when I open it I've got all my yellows and oranges I've got all my pinks so they're my cool pinks and my warm reds I've got all my blues um greens um, and browns. I think I've not got that wrong actually, because I want I want it to look like. No, that's right. And then the greys, and the same with with the sherbet, the the sherbet lemons. The the next ones is the Derwent ink tense pencils. So again, I've got there. So I've got yellows and I've got oranges. I've got pinks, I've got purples. I think I've missed one actually. Oranges and yellows, pinks and purples, blues, greens, browns. So they're kind of similar. Where if I'd have put the yellow one on the first page, then they would always they would be out, if that makes any sense. They would boom be together. Um, these are some uh, Derwent uh, pencils. And this is the graphite tint. So graphite tint, there's six pages. Um, and then I've got my Neocolor 2s. Again, I've tried to, put, instead of put it, they're not fixed in, but instead of putting them like this, I put them, that one there, so that I've got all my reds together. 
um, all my purples, blues. And probably I'm going to cut these up and revamp them because they're not in the order that I really want because there's some obscure colours. And then I found some really obscure colours um, at the back here. And I'd like to put these in the proper order. So I might have to rejiggle it. But um, it works quite well. I know that there's the silver and the gold here. Um, and then what I did with this, when I had an extra square, I scratched the sil the gold and then I scratched the gold over the top, the silver over the top. So it's kind of um, a warm silver or a cool gold, depending on how you look at it. But it's basically um, the gold 449 from um, Neo Color 2 and number 49, the silver. I don't think they make them anymore, but I've got an old set. Uh, and again, these are the obscure ones uh, from that vintage set. Oh, hi, Sam. Sam, but welcome. <coughs> Excuse me, croaky voice. Welcome to Bunny Designs. So um, I'm going to see if I can get some of these. I'm missing some of these uh, peerless. Um, this is the, the main set, but you can get the second set um, of 40. Um, and I think... I'm still missing some because I found them. So that's where the book is so far. My new Neo uh, watercolour book. And this is where we are now. But when I've gone through the colours, I've got some missing. So um, I haven't got Hunter's Green and um, uh, Chrome Green. I haven't got that one. And there's a couple of blues that I'm missing as well. Um, Alice Blue. Um, I don't think I've got Deep Blue. So I've obviously missed a few, so I'm going to have to go individually onto the Peerless website and you can buy them individually, the, the ones that I've got missing. Um, I do like this little set. Um, I obviously use certain colours more than other colours. Uh, it was the plastic that I didn't like. Um, and do be careful with the Peerless because this one has got glue, if you can see it's a bit shiny. I glued the wrong side because I thought, I thought that was the side. Um, I've got written amber yellow on there. Or it is amber yellow. So you do have to label them. They're going to pop out these. I'm going to rejig these anyway. There's a lot of colour on here. And that's what I'm going to use today. Um, I think I'm going to use the Peerless out of this particular set. Um, so I've got uh, six yellows, um, six orangey reds. Um, then I've got almost 12 pinks. There's a couple of the scarlet ver vermilion. So I've got some nice pinky reds, a few purples and blues, uh, turquoisey greens, um, nice tra traditional greens, grass green, olive green. Um, and then there's some sepias, burnt umber, some nice um, um, neutral colours. And then on the last page here, I've got sepia brown, ivory black, pearl grey and lamp black. If I want any darker colours, I don't tend to use those. I think somewhere I must have lost, I think somewhere I have lost some colours. Because I've, I found these two greens and these two blues. Um, and I'm not sure why they're not connected to one of these pages. So somewhere along the line I've lost I think I've lost one or two because I think there's quite a few blues uh, that I haven't got. So um, this is the touch and go system that I'm going to be using. I may take those to one side because they might drive me insane if they're not stuck down. Um, I do like the Alice blue and the sky blue. Um, forget me not, butterfly wing blue. Um, don't know what that one is. It's another blue there. That's a beautiful blue. But so you can see, they're not half of them hasn't been used. Um, and what inspired me? I've done this page in a paler colour. Um, that might drive me nuts. I have some put something here to hold that down. I'm going to be using the number one brush. So this is what I call my flick touch and go system. Um, and I was inspired 
uh, that was the horse we did uh, I did a while ago there is a video on that one um, I like the bird with the butterflies so I think that's what I'm going to do today I do like this poster book this is the Kirby Roseanne poster so we don't have that crease down the middle Let me uh, see if I can do. Oh, I don't want to do that. Stop it. See what's happening in there. So I think this is the one I'm going to do today. And these are perforated. And the easiest way to do is to do it that way and try and crease it before you tear it out. So. are not brilliant if you use that one to hold it down i'm not able to pull it out i think hopefully so if you've got this on your knee you could then use this as a as a um, as a pad i think mine i think oh, i might leave that like that so it's holding it just gonna have a mouthful of tea. Um, I stayed on my own yesterday, but my daughter did bring me what buy me a lovely mug yesterday. And I think I like the idea of these butterflies being quite vivid. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I don't seem to have one handy. I don't think I've used the peerless. That was the graphite tint. I was going to use graphite tint today, uh, but that's the graphite tint. Um, that's all new watercolours. I'm not sure if I've done a page. No, I haven't. I haven't used them yet in this book, so it'll be quite new. But they're very, very strong. They're very well pigmented. So I think we've, we're all set. I think the light's okay. So thanks for stopping by, guys. So this is my lovely mug. I'll show it when I get a bit more cold tea drunk. And the beauty of the number one brush is I'm going to leave this here as well. This is my Derwent, my Winter Newton. It's from a, a, a set, that a vintage set. Um, of uh, professional watercolours so I can just flick I can just touch and go and flick um, and this is what I do like about this particular system is um, I can flip now normally I can flip and you do different things because I, I had graphite tint there I had watercolours so um, that, that book is going to be revamped because Yes, they're nice to work with their own, so one page for one particular type. But I do like the fact that I can take that one thing and one book and work in different ways. So at the moment, this is where we're at. I haven't stuck it down. Um, and instead of it being that way around, this one is going to be this way around. Uh, it's got to be easy to flick as well, which this one is. Now, I may have a problem when we're in the middle um, hopefully it will stay open so I may have to devise a bit of a clip system um, but I think if you break the spine backwards enough it'll lay flat so when you're working you can flip through your neos your graphite tint derwent ink tents and the dirt watercolor pencils as well um, I might 
do um, a section on these when I revamp these uh, near colors because if you've only got a small amount of colors I want to make make some squares where you can double up on two colors so if you've only got a few yellows and a few blues we can double up so we can end up with hundreds fill this book completely um, and I think I might want to do that the other idea I did think about last year was having one book with one particular type of color in it so although I'm going to have my lovely touch and go so I can pick this up and it's got every color I want it's got all my favorite things my water-based medium I will also have I've got three of these um, I'm also going to do doing so I can if, if they're labeled peerless they'll just be peerless in here if i label um when uh, derwent watercolors pencils they'll just be the watercolors and that's what i've done with this one this is to go in my bible journaling bag because it's all derwent watercolors they're 72 but instead of putting six on one page i've put two and the reason i've done that is when i'm bible journaling this particular type of derwent watercolor pencil will not go through your bible pages if you use it with a damp rigger um, and so that's why I've got this little one on its own so again I might do a peerless one on its own as well so if I just want to work in peerless I can pick this up which is quite small size of a wallet um, and I can color but I do like the fact that I've got all my colors in one particular um, big big album and so I pick this up. This is all I need is this and a water brush. And that's all I need. And I've got thousands and thousands of colours, tens of thousands of colours. So I haven't stuck those in. I haven't labelled them and I haven't done um, a colour guide either because um, I didn't think it needed them. I just didn't think it warranted one i have a rough idea what they're doing and when i'm doing bible journaling i also have a little piece of paper next to me anyway oh you're welcome sand sand um <clears throat> sand sand pat i haven't got my teeth in this morning so i say at the moment this is the original set that i had in here and um I spent a day in the in the garden sitting, cutting up these. There's, there's quite a few photographs of me cutting all the squares up. And then I made the, I, I named them because the one thing about some of the peerless is they were, they were not named. Um, I bought the cheaper section because I was, if you bought them that were labelled, they were more expensive. And as a tight Yorkshire lass, I thought if I'm really, really careful with this set, um, so I, I stuck them down and I did the colour ski, uh, the colour guide, um, the colour swatch rather, and labelled them. And then when I said did the rose one, um, that's the one that I used to do a full page. So I used it also stuck a, another little square on top. But there's still lots of colours. Remember, we don't always want the strong colour. Sometimes we want these lovely paler colours further down. So when I say a pinprick of colour, that's what we need. Um, so I think we've got a little a butterfly up here. Um, I think I'm going to do... Um, there's an amethyst, mauve, um, helitope. And I think I do need a, a little bit of paper for this because these colours are very strong. So if I go here where I've used it, I get barely nothing. But if I go here where it's dark, I get full colour. The same with this one. If I go here, I get full colour. And again, you've got to decide, do I want... A watercolor effect or do I want some quite strong colors and you probably get maybe 20 shades out of this one so you might want something up here so we're not going to touch the strong color where it's shiny we're going to touch the blue if we touch where it's pale blue we're going to get a nice pale color 
if we touch somewhere in between that's been used but not to some extent we get a mid color and they all had a little dot missing because the little dot was how I did the color scheme the color guide so they should all have a little dot missing and then I've kind of spread out a bit hope that made sense so I've got my my bit of paper here that I can just touch just to make sure um, this deep blue was beautiful again pinprick of color um, that would be quite nice for this particular butterfly so we start start dark and this is quite a a used brush is this now if you wanted to do some finer detail you could use a smaller brush these spaces are quite small um so i'll have to twist this to a point because as you see i've got a little hook on that um, and that's because I've used it quite a lot, but I'm, I don't want to use other brushes. I want to show that this touch and go system will work even on small spaces such as this. So now I need a color to go with the blue. Um, the sky blue, again, a pinprick of color is all we need to just just give this butterfly and I didn't like the plastic this is why I've changed it because I just don't like this and I just want the tiniest little bit to go around the outside of that one and these colours, as you see, are very, very strong, very strong indeed. So I've got the colour on here. This is probably going to be just a really vibrant, vibrant colours now. Um, I did have a sponge. I think I've dropped it. So. I, think I did put that on here, but I think I'm going to put it up here because it's getting on my nerves. So draw back, twist to a point, and then it's barely damp. Goes such a long way. And I had envisaged that these particular butterflies are going to be very, very strong. Again, you just need a touch, a pinprick of colour. These peerless ones are very, and they're very well priced as well. And they last a long time. They really do last a long time. Now, I'm going to have to clean my brush. Must clean your brush with these because they're very strong and you will contaminate your other colours. Um, so I just kind of fancy. Actually, I don't fancy yellow. So let me just do the eye here. And the beak. Lots of colour on this. Lots of colour. Lots of bright colours. Um, I think I might want a pink. And perhaps a mauve colour. Changed my mind and went for... The amethyst colour. Sorry, the helitope colour, beg your pardon. And again, this is another little way, touch and go, just a really simple way to sit and colour. Just to keep it really simple. We, we really don't want to have too much to do. We would like to keep it quite simple. And then perhaps to 
And I just kind of like this very simple way to work. There's another one here. So we've got a turquoise blue. Um, I have a lot, a lot on here now, so I'm going to have to go somewhere where it's a bigger butterfly because I do have a lot of this colour. So I'm just going to do this butterfly here. That was the turquoise blue. Very, very strong. I do love this touch and go system. I think I'm going to actually do this a bit brighter. Again, doesn't really like going over this twice. Really doesn't like it because it's 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 thinner paper. So it will go through. It will go through. If you keep rubbing, you can only kind of do it once and then that's it, really. Otherwise, you find yourself in, in deep trouble. So that was... Um, that was turquoise blue. Peacock blue, which is technically a green, turquoise green. And these look like they've really been shot to death. But if you look, there's still a lot of colour on here. And that's perfect for little small spaces like this. Um, if you were doing a big project, and you needed a lot of colour, then you'd need to use a new a new colour space. But just doing this is fine. Um, and then I think we will have a cobalt blue around the outside. And again, this little brush works really well doing this. And these are quite small spaces, so it's doing really well. I think that's the back of the butterfly, actually. So I have to just bring that butterfly back in again. No, you just want something in the middle, which I think. It might have a yellow. So again, you've got to clean the brush with these. They're very, very strong. And I think we just have a little bit of chrome yellow. Bit of a warmer yellow this time. It really did go a long way, did that yellow? And possibly this little that butterfly there could be yellow. So here would be pale, and here is strong colour. And this little brush, it, it is beginning to fray at the edges. But if you turn it to a certain angle, you can you can still. Again, just be really careful retouching. Um, um, we are going very dark this time, so we can we can forgive this tiny bit of yellow that would be on the brush. Now, if you've got a new, and uh, this is supposed to be a really vibrant red, but it's coming through as orange, because I'm using it fairly pale, not full strength. And again, 
this brush can do some quite small spaces. And I don't know if that's a tail. No, it's a cloud tail, I think. It's not a butterfly. It's not part of the butterfly. I don't think. Now, I do have some orange on here. So I think I'm probably going to pick something that I think might be orangey pink. There is a dragonfly, so we've got this gorgeous. That's the screen by Edward Edmund Munch. Um, that's a pie. Oh, we've got some nice flowers here. So I think they'd lend themselves to. And again, now I've got to touch again now to do. I've only got two flowers. So now I've got to kind of clean the brush and find a colour to go into here. So I think we'll have... Um, A viridian green. And this touch and go system is, is quite nice because you just pick up the, the strength you need. I haven't done any little bodies on the butterflies, I'll do those last. So again, you've got to clean your brush with this one because they are very, very strong. So I think we will have a forget me not. Oh well, we've got a butterfly wing colour, so could possibly have a butterfly wing colour. do want these to be quite strong so sometimes you want to be pale and sometimes you want to be quite strong and I do like the idea that these are going to be quite strong so I think we'll have the red rose that's a really deep pink Again, it's almost a pinprick of colour, which is going a long way. And it's a lovely, quiet way to work as well. I do have a little tiny bit of pink on here, so find something that might be pink. There's a little potion bottle there, just put the pale colour on there and then clean the brush, twist to a point. I squeezed it a little bit, but nothing much came out. Because remember, when we do this, we agitate the water, if you can see. So squeeze and twist and then we just get a small amount. Um, possibly a tea rose red, I think. Possibly tea rose red, I think, maybe here. It's one of my favourite colours is the tea rose red. And you would get a line if you if you missed you get a line although it's a watercolor we can't really rub on this paper because it's not thick enough to rub oh hi Dala! welcome to bunny's designs 
Thank you for popping in. Um, I hope everybody's staying safe and colouring. And there's a beautiful peacock green, but it's actually blue. Um, I've had the Viridian, which is quite nice. Um, I think I use um, dark green. Oh, there's Rome green here. It could be chrome green. I think I've, when I tore out the book, the, the double sided sticky tape is taken off the sea. I think it's chrome green, not Rome green, as, it, as it's saying. Um, So I don't know if anybody wants me to show them how I make my little book. It's quite boring once you've done the first few pages. But I suppose in the current climate, we, 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 we want to be we want to be bored. We want to be watching things for quite a while rather than just a few minutes. I do like that actually with the white, but I think it might need something else. I might just leave that for the moment. Um, put another little butterfly here. So I'm not probably going to use the the the, the cooler colours. I don't think the browns. I use these for the bird and the little bodies of the butterflies. But I think it's the wings need to be kind of nice and blue. There's a beautiful Alice blue here. Um, I think this one should be Alice Blue. It's almost, the Alice Blue is like a French ultramarine. It's a purple blue. So this little brush is just, just touching me and you just, literally tickling the ivories that's all you're doing and you're getting these really kind of nice spaces So we have this kind of, I might use the tea rose red would be good, but we've got so many different ones, we don't need to use them. I've used that red before, so let's use uh, Japonica red for a change. And you can see what everyone does. So again, these are nearly all full strength colours. It's only when I move somewhere else does it go darker. Sorry, beg your pardon, it goes lighter because the brush is continuously letting out a small amount of water. Now I do have a little bit of colour on here, so I need a flower. I've got a flower here. But I might do that yellow one. What else have we got? That's kind of I've got a caterpillar. We have a broomstick, and I think Kirby's used to Kirby Roseanne's pictures. Used to it was a kind of a find that things hidden within the drawing that you had to find. Um, I think we'll just do a little bit of a pie. Um, there's a bit of a water lily here as well. So that's all I want to do is just a flick and find colours. There's a lovely chrome orange. Um, I should probably do this butterfly here. 
a beautiful chrome orange, which when it goes to yellow is quite spectacular. Let's do that one. And then we'll look for forget me not blue again i've got to clean the brush because there will be that orange on there um, now you'll get some beautiful grungy colors if you don't clean your brush so it all depends on how you want to work the first time you use these paints or any paints any water-based paint is have a play on a page you don't particularly like or photocopy a page and then when you finish that photocopy page, you would have played with all the colours, know how they all react. And you've got a bit more understanding. Yes, Dala, there's so many reds. Um, I think um, in the original one, there's, uh, there's a set of pinks as well, which I don't have. So there's even more colours, I think. Um, it's like everything, we don't like the... The full set of everything especially the peerless because you could just make a little book with just peerless and you would still have thousands of colors because these not only give 10 different shades they give probably 20 as here now there's 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 probably 20 there's five darks five mediums five lights and five pales definitely 20 different shades in one color so these are extra vibrant um, and it's such an easy system. It, it, this really lends itself to touch and go because you're not scrubbing because the pigment is so strong. You're just touching and taking it across, and it makes it so easy to do. Um, I found a little bit of cheese, so I'm going to use um, chrome yellow to just colour that little bit of cheese in. Um and we could touch a little bit of burnt umber to put the holes in the cheese. And I've got a little bit of burnt umber, so I can now go across and do all the bodies. Just do a few of the bodies that I've done. So we can touch burnt umber. I may as well do all the bodies and it's a job done because, again, I will probably forget. I will probably forget what colour I used. So we'll do all the bodies first. And so this little tiny brush is really doing well for small spaces. You wouldn't think it would it would it would do but if you're careful and you just stroke the color gently you will find it might go over the line slightly but it's not noticeable and for the ease of the not having to wash your brush out and waste paint paint the ease of the touch and go system it's it's a compromise that i will quite happily make because the system is so easy and you can't really tell where I've gone over you just touch in the tip um, and it all it all almost becomes quite a fine brush it's it's not a big brush isn't this it's a fine brush so it, it will behave itself quite quite nicely just gently just gently stroking that page and then all you're doing is just depositing a small amount of colour so I hope everybody stay safe and colour should be our motto shouldn't it guys <laughs> stay safe and colour um and if ever we had an excuse to sit all day colouring, this is it. 
this is this is the this is the colorist's dream really um to be able to sit um and color now we've got a half acre garden so we can go out but i've not been out because i don't go downstairs because the girls have been out um so at the moment i'm i'm staying in the bedroom so um but what i thought i could do is to get my little electric scooter and just go poodle around the dog walk for a bit of fresh air because the scooter probably isn't good to go down the garden it's it's a bit of a rough field i think i've done all my bodies now so again not much color on there but i really want to get colors Sometimes you see me not do that because I want a bit of grunge, but different pages lend themselves to different things. And I really like these vibrant colours. So we, we want them, you know, really kind of bright. They are quite bright. We'll not be doing a background on this one. Oh, the sand says I can hear the birds chirping. Yeah, and um, the big girl, the big um, Alsatian Dachshund, uh, is the woo 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 woo. She woo woos. She doesn't bark. She woo woos. <laughs> She's a woo woo. -er. She woo woos. So we've got pink there, we've got yellow. We might actually have a, a green butterfly. No, we've got a green one. Again, this is the thing you want to flick and choose, flick and choose. and Um, a mountain green looks quite nice oops it's a bit dark but actually that's going to be quite a nice little butterfly again it's really behaving itself is this this butterfly and I'm just dabbing I'm just dabbing if it's a really tiny space I'm just dabbing so that I can keep within the line. Now I do have a bit of green on here, so I think I could do a, probably a leaf or something. And if we look at the pale color here, we can see what it does. So it's quite strong there, but here it's quite pale. So it could be the broomstick, it could be, um, a leaf i don't think i've got many leaves but i think um they're going to turn into clouds which is the the darker blue so we do have a couple of leaves and again, you find all sorts of things once you start to colour, all sorts of things. Um, that's quite a nice, this is quite a nice colour actually, the mountain green. To start dark. And then go pale, so I might just spend a minute or two. using this to kind of oh there's the elf master so it's not everyone that's going to turn into a leaf i don't think but kind of like this one and It's quite nice that it is quite pale, but it does take that off why it looks. That's quite nice because I want that because I'm not doing a background, so I do require that a little bit. Um, that goes into a cloud. This would be a nice cloud colour, actually, but it isn't. Um, I think I'm going to do this one as well. And this is where we do get that dark to light, because if you touch where the dark is, you can get 
quite a nice effect. Again, these are very strong, so they do go quite a long way. I think just a little bit there. And then we, we have these, these flower leaves here. And again, this little tiny brush is, is doing quite well. And looking for something that's more leaf-like than cloud-like. So some of these are definitely cloud. I just thought I'd go through and get some of the leaves done. So we have a leaf here. Again, you pick up the dark. And this one's kind of quite dark. Again, I should really Most of them I think I've got now. And this mountain green is quite nice. I'm going to do that leaf different because it's a different leaf. I think, I think I've got most of the leaves. I think maybe that's a leaf. There probably will be some more that I've lost because this is the nature of Kirby that we know and love for hiding things. There is a different green there, which I kind of want to do different green. Um, but I have a little bit of green on my brush as a tight Yorkshire lass. I want to use it. You see, if I go back over it, you see, I'm rubbing into a line, so you've got to be careful. Hi, Pamela. Welcome to Bunny Designs. So clean the brush. And, and I've got, as you say, there's a couple of lighter greens, and I found those purely because of that. So we'll do those. Um, grass grass green and I wasn't going to do them grass green I was going to do them olive and um, no I think I'm going to do them olive keep this green for a butterfly there's a couple of little butterflies I should have done that one blue really so right, let's get the olive color and color in these and this is a beautiful olive color this one and I know exactly what it's going to do because I have this color guide and there's some more here somewhere so now I found a kettle and that um, other green I had would have been lovely on that because it would have looked like Sort of look like some things. So I don't think we've got any more leaves, but of course, this is a Kirby, and we possibly may well have. So I've got a very pale green on here now. Um, I think I might just put it on the ice cream. So 
amethyst we'll have an amethyst butterfly next i think see when you go back you can't rub you've got a line there because it's very strong and you can't rub that's one thing you cannot do Another wooden spoon. So we'll think wooden spoons. I've got to get rid of this purple. And we'll have daffodil yellow to go around the outside. because I've managed to keep the circles white I think I'll leave them white if it had gone over them I probably would have colored them in but at the moment I kind of like some of the little white areas so I may leave those for a minute I've got some yellow but it's a paler yellow so I think I'm going to go around the edge of this green it's still going is this color it's so so strong it's still going and i still got some left so i think i think i will put it here and now i've got a beautiful soft very soft yellow but i've used every scrap so you can do that you go to different places and go from light to dark um and I, I do kind of like that. So it's not going to be obviously in your face, as I said earlier. <laughs> I thought it was going to be. Um, the cobalt blue is very strong. Very, very strong is cobalt blue. Um, I think I'm going to do this butterfly cobalt blue. And the green has turned it into a different colour. Okay, we've got to remember we can't rub because we'll destroy the colour. So I've got a very pale blue on here now. So um, what have we got that we can do pale blue? Possibly the stopper, and that's made that a purple now. You can clean the brush. So, thanks for stopping by, guys. Hope everybody's colouring and keeping safe and colouring. Um, another kind of a red very strong this one i did just a pin prick of color um and it said it was blood red and by jolly it is blood red that one but this little brush is just being so well behaved so i've got these little flowers now so i think i'm going to use the blood red one where's it gone where's it gone that one it was a pinprick of colour. You have to be a little bit careful. But then we got so many colours out of that one colour. And I still have a very pale a very pale colour on here, so I think we might just do the scream. And what other colours have we got? 
It's now turned into almost a flesh color. It's a beautiful color now. And just a tiny bit of pale, pale pink, almost um, a blush of a baby's cheek is probably a better color. Although my granddaughter's cheeks are a little bit red. Um, this is what she looks like so far. We didn't manage to FaceTime today. That's what she looks like <laughs> so far. She's grown up so much. I can't believe how much she's grown. <laughs> and uh, she spent quite a lot of time with Granny, so hopefully soon. Oh, I found a pumpkin. So let's look for a pumpkin colour. Um, we've got a chrome orange. I think the cadmium, the chrome orange might be a, a pumpkin colour. Let's have a look. Yep. And if we go over it's very strong, you can see the difference there. I don't know if I want to, I need to zoom in a bit, I'm not sure. And it's now gone to kind of a straw colour, so I thought I'd colour in the broom. So we've gone from that really rich colour all the way to this colour pale. And if I just go over that one, turns down that pink. Have you got any questions? So thanks for stopping by, guys. I hope everybody's safe. If anybody's got any questions or requests, um, they seem to be coming through quite well now. My tea's cold. I hate cold tea. Um, I think we're going to have to do this a really bright colour. Um, but again, you're flicking through and just look at all these colours. Oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> just bear with me. I'm just going to uh, shut the window because that might be going on all day which will drive us all insane i hate to shut out the sun we have a lovely sunny day today um you have to tell guys if it's going to get if it's getting too much to to, to have not to buy the things that we normally buy so that we can do a bit of dieting because I think um, with three, three, 12 weeks, I think we could lose quite a couple of stone. And I think that would be quite good for most of us. Um, love the colours. I mean, we just have to flip. Uh, we've only got a few ages, but look at the colours we've got. And we're not looking at these colours. We're looking at all these scrummy colours. Um, so we've got some gorgeous, there's only six yellows there, bright yellows, but we've got at least 20 colours in there. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of colours. The same with the orangey reds, uh, same with the pinky reds and the pinks. Um, there's only three purples or four purples, but they're really, really vibrant. The blues, we've got eight blues, but they're gorgeous um the greens turquoises absolutely scrumptious and then we've got some lovely neutral colors and there are some grays and uh, warm grays lamp black ivory black and sepia so again it's another really good set that um that we have i think uh, so you know six yellows six oranges six red six pinky red six purples six blues six turquoises six greens and six browns i mean that has to be the ultimate thing and that's nothing to do with mixing the colors that, that's not mixing colors that's just using them diluted with water yes yeah, pamela says they're gorgeous yeah they're they're really good and if you live in the U u.s they're they're a very good price it's only if you live outside the US, you start getting lumbered with, I got £64. It cost me £64 to buy the set, but then it cost me £64. I was like, no. So I don't, 
buy them again because I just it's just not viable but they are scrummy scrumptious um they are really gorgeous so we just have to keep an eye on things for postage and things um there are some liquids which i would love um the little bottles but again can't get them to the uk because they're glass they're little glass bottles so um i would think playing with the bottles and putting drops of different colors together you can just imagine what colors you could get um and take this to a whole new level um but we work with what we've got this is what i've got and they're still absolutely gorgeous very strong um and as i say probably this set and the hydras um and the hydras you are talking it's nearly all gone mine now <laughs> again another thing i've I left in the sun and they dried out um these are the strongest colors um so really 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 lovely colors and i think that's quite nice in a color book page where if you only have one set of anything take it to its limits um use them as as monochrome use them with two tone uh do grungy uh, bright colors diluted colors and then mix colors and so you've got all this variation even if you only have one set of a particular watercolor um, and i think that's important that we take what we have and stretch it to the limit which we can do there's even you know if you have six colors you can still stretch it to the limit um, and i think that's really important although i would say if you are in the us i think it's it used to be $16, I think they're about $25 now for the set, but it's not that's not going to break the bank. And I think that's for what they are without the postage, <laughs> they're absolutely amazing. Um, I do have a teapot there now. The other way to do this is to do the bird, and then everything else will pop up. But sometimes you can't tell what's what. So the I, I pick out all the butterflies because I know what they should look like. Then I'm picking the leaves out. And then we've got odd things like broomstick things. And then what should be left are the clouds and the bird. So then the clouds merge into the bird and the bird merges into the cloud. And um, I probably will do that last. There's no buckle. Um there's a tiny bit of a mark here because I was I was scrubbing. I went back to scrub and you can't do that on this paper. But the touch and go system where you touch, pick colour up and just manipulate it very carefully. That works very well here. So then who's got any questions? Just pop them in caps. I am going to just have another bath for tea and I may make myself a coffee, although the coffee's gone downstairs now. Because um, we've only got one pot of coffee. Um, so I might just ask Hubby to bring it up and I'll just have to put a few spoons. Uh, we can't get any shopping, um, but we're using up what we've got. I would like to do a, a one shop. I've only got one lot of porridge left. And there wasn't much left for me this morning because I made it for my husband and my daughter. And I wanted to leave a little bit in the packet for me. Um, but uh, never mind, it's fine. And I've only got one pot of milk left as well, but hey -o. So if I ask hubby to bring the, the coffee up. Because tea tastes horrible at the minute, um, but I'm, I've got a bit of a cold. So I'll ask hubby to bring the coffee jar up and then I shall, I shall show you my cup. That my girls bought me. I got a beautiful card. And, and I'm just going to move that <laughs> because Murphy's Law says. So look at my beautiful cup that my girls bought me for Mother's Day. And it's just what I wanted actually because I'm. Um, I'm using a, a little thing that you push a button and you get a certain amount of water in. 
Um, so that actually works quite well. And um, it's working quite well. And again, you can see there's some beautiful colors on there. You'd almost want to draw those. Um, some pretty beautiful colors on there. So it says it's a fox ivy. Tesco's, because they went to Tesco's yesterday to get a few bits and pieces. Um, so it's important to have um, water with you as well. So when you're colouring, stop to drink. Yes, Pamela, it's beautiful, isn't it? It is absolutely scrumptious. I've got to be careful not to. Um, and it, it, yeah, I cleaned it this morning. So that's tea. Um, but again, I'm not going to go in the bathroom every five minutes. Uh, we are sharing the bathroom, but they've got their orders that they use the downstairs one if they can. And then when they finish in the bathroom, they clean it so that when I go in it, it's clean. Um, so we're working on it. We're working on it. I hope he does come and sit at the end of the bed. He was, we were sleeping nose to tail, but um, because he's been mixing with the girls, um, and they're going. They were going out. It was important that we stayed apart. But I think after a couple of weeks, if we're all right, he's okay. Then he'll move back in. So I do miss my feet rubbing because <laughs> he used to rub my feet. And of course, if you're sleeping nose to tail, that's brilliant because he can rub. He can rub your feet. It's very good for arthritis. Is that? Um, so. No, it's not nose to tail, it's top tail, isn't it? Is it top tail? So again, I I'm, I kind of like this. I don't think about colour as such. I kind of think, oh, haven't got a blue in that bit. What blue do I want? Well, that's purple blue, so I might do a cooler blue, but there's a cool blue there. I kind of think that way. I was, oh, there's no yellow up here, or we've not got a we've not got a purple down here. I just that's the only bit that I think. Yes, it is. It is best to be safe. And, and again, I think we're now realising that uh, we're all, every age um, it is potential not good. So um, we need to colour. If everybody coloured, washed their hands and had lots of drinks of water. <laughs> um, I have to drink a lot anyway because my asthma is always bad. <coughs> See, I have a silly cough. But anybody that listens to my videos know that there's thousands of coughs in my videos. When I first made videos, I used to cut out every Alfie bark and every cough. And I find that, that um, I was cutting out more than three quarters, <laughs> three quarters of the cough. Um, so uh, apologies in advance for the coughs and the Alfie barks. We might have an Alfie come. He was promised to have a bath because he's a stinky Pete. But I'm not sure if he's had a bath recently. Oh, hubby. Hiya. Thank you. Yeah, just bob it on there because I'm going to have to clean it, aren't I? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I've got my own pot of tea bags as well. So what we do is hubby will bring me the jar up, but everybody's touched it. So I'll I'll use a bleach wipe um, and wipe what he brings in. Or the other way I do it, if it's a pot, I normally put it in the bowl and wash up. Um, and then I've washed it and then I wash my hands. So you can't have things coming up and down stairs when you're doing it because it's, it's obviously not working. Even the card that I got, I opened it and realised really I shouldn't have opened it. So it's silly things like that. And what I remember is when I was uh, when I was young, I went to, I was about 10, I think maybe 11. Uh, no, I wouldn't have been 10. I would have been about nine. We went to Eam, Eam in Derbyshire. Um, and it's where the Great Plague from London came to up, up north. And that was because they had cloth that they'd bought from London and it was in the cloth and when they started do, using the cloth that's how it spread and I always remember that uh, it's a funny thing how I remember so I always think it's on everything that we touch um, I don't want this to be a, 
um, a no coronavirus zone. It is a colouring zone, but people have questions and different countries are doing different things. So if anybody needs to talk about it in chat, that's fine. This is not a colouring, it's a colouring thing, but it's colouring for therapy. It's colouring quick, easy, and it's to occupy ourselves um, as if we're in like World War Two in occupation. If, if, if you've been invaded, you'd be told to stay inside, then this is what we would have to do. So it's basically we have to think like that. We have to think we've got to find things to do. So we clean drawers out. Um, if you've got decorating things, decorate the house. If you've got the energy, um, clean cupboards out, go through your wardrobe clean drawers out, clean your art things out. This is the time that if you do not have any colour swatches, you can sit and do the colour swatches. Uh, there's certain things I've got and I think, oh, I've got, I want to do that job, but it's either boring or it's laborious. This is the time we do our boring jobs. And the best thing is that when this is all over, we are going to be ready to go because we've done all the all the mundane jobs that we didn't want to do. Um, if you've got weeding to do and it's nice in the garden, you can go with a trowel and a pot of tea and go gardening and weeding. All these boring things that we want to do, um, sticking these, making making a colour book. This takes hours to sit and do this, but this is the ideal time to take your Neos, your different watercolour pencils, ink tens pencils. Um, this is the time to do these mundane things that we would, I'd love a book, but it's going to take me hours to make one. Well, we have hours now. Yes, Pamela says we're so lucky to have this hobby. The one thing about colouring, it does take hours. Um, it does take commitment and it takes it takes um it takes time and the nicest thing about this is it takes up time time that we probably would think oh my goodness um like i've been self-isolating for quite a while now probably three weeks it's nothing to me it's normal to me i come on here i color I'm sorting a drawer out. I'm messing about pulling these pages apart so that I can re rejig my watercolour book. This is a job that would take two or three days, but I'm doing it. Um, I'm going through all my art stuff. Um, this is the time to sell on eBay, but a warning, everything you get on the post, you wipe first. You've got to be careful. You can't buy and sell things without being careful. Remember E.M. and the Great Plague this is like that things that i touch and i've got the virus somebody else can touch and they'll pick it up now all they have to do is go wash their hands and it's gone but it's it, but you've got to be careful so don't think because you're at home you're invincible you've still got to behave but there's no reason why we can't say to somebody i'm going to sell this i don't have the virus I'm selling this on eBay. Somebody else gets it and wipes the packaging. Um, that's the important thing. But what a time to go through your wardrobe and think, I haven't worn that wedding suit. I have got that wedding suit. I've got this. I've got that. Let's get rid. Let's have a purge of our homes. And we can do that. We can buy paint in. We can buy all sorts. As long as when we get the paint, we wipe the tin. Once we've wiped that tin and it's come in, it's safe. We can then decorate. We can paint skirting boards. We can paint doors, things that take ages to do. So we have we can write a list of things that we want to do and then say, what's the most important? What's the easiest? And then go through that list. And after 12 weeks, we probably find we, we've quite enjoyed doing it and we've got more jobs to do. Um, so we, we, we have to make this time advantage, an, an advantage. Oh, so, so Sanpan says we're going on shelter at home. 
in Dallas starting today. So um, yeah, and I think I think I think ninety ninety nine percent of the planet is doing it, and one percent isn't. But that one percent is is making everybody else vulnerable. So I think there's going to be a clampdown. But as I say, if if you can't go out, um, scrub a carpet. Um, do do all the horrible make a list have a cup of tea um, I'm watching John Wayne movies old movies that I love when I was a kid put a movie on that takes two hours out of a day I've been watching two hours movies at night then it's nearly bedtime um, I love old movies or box sets or we've all got the internet um, I've got a thousand videos <laughs> for anybody to death put them on and go to sleep I can bore everybody to death and get, make them go to sleep. So, or, or get your favourite person on, um, or colour with the person, look at the videos, think, actually, I haven't used my peerless, like me, I haven't used them for months, I've got them out. Um, watch YouTube channels. You could spend millions of hours watching YouTube channels and cookery programmes, learn to cook, learn a language. Um, you can learn a language uh, in in twelve in twelve weeks. Uh, just how how thick at the end of it. Just think how good you're going to feel about things. Losing weight in three months, we could lose a couple of stone. Um, we can again fit into those clothes that we probably wouldn't fit into. Um, there's there's thousands of things we can do. Um, take up a new hobby, learn to knit, learn to crochet. Um, just just thousands of things to do that we put off doing, all those horrible jobs. Um, I think, what's the one about kissing your toad or feeding your toad? I forgot what the, the, there's a phrase. I think it's kissing your toad. And it's like when you're doing your chores, the worst thing you like is doing the bins. So you do the bins first. And then all the other chores are nicer than that forgotten what the saying is this is a famous saying um, i'm sure it's kiss the toad but it means get all the horrible jobs out of the way um as i say there's just so many things you can do that would make you feel better and the things that take time that you never have time to do so you know read that book um if um, I just realised, actually, I think I might start reading the Harry Potters again. I haven't read um, you know, Start reading the Harry Potter books. And by the end of it, it you've, you've taken up some time. We have to take our time up doing things that we like doing and some things that we've put off doing, like jobs and chores, um, because this is the time to use that time. And then at the end of the, the – the, the, when this is over – We'll have a, a tidier house. We've found things that we've lost for years. Uh, tidy the attic out. That's a job that people can do. Um, and you find it's like Christmas. You find things that you've, you've not used for a long time. So I think it's really important that we do that. And I think it's important that we talk about it. You know, as I say, I know this is a colouring ch channel, uh, but it's also for therapy. Um, if you are a bit lonely, just pop on a channel there's a there's a wonderful one that i used to watch the the bears in canada um there's a the wildlife one in africa there's so many wonderful live shows you can watch um and don't watch the news 24 7 i watch the news in the morning and i watch it at night and that's it i turn it off um i watch i make myself watch um watch other things that i haven't seen for a long time so there's all sorts of things we can do. And luckily, if you are a colourer, this is something that you can do. You can wade your way through all these books in 12 weeks um, and just think how wonderful we will feel because we all have that little bit of guilt uh, that we have so many books and we don't have the time to colour. Well, guess what? <laughs> we do. Oh, thank you. Yes, she's, a sound, so she's only been grocery shopping once in two weeks. Well, I've been trying to get into Sainsbury's on the site to say that I can't get out and I need my shopping delivered. Um, but 
because I don't want to send hubby out and hubby can't hubby can't drive me so I can't go out and I can't really drive on my own I could get there but I couldn't get the wheelchair out so it's pointless me going because I can't get into the shop and um, so we, we, we might have to work that one out a bit better but yeah, you know, I'm going to have to have plain rice instead of rice with a bit of seasoning. So it's not going to kill me. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to just eat less less food and, and hopefully lose weight. So, again, when you're coloring for a long time or you're doing a job, you forget about eating. at you No, know, not eating completely. But where we'd think, oh, I want a cup of tea and a biscuit. You would do a job and think, oh, it's lunchtime. So you'd have lunch and you've not eaten those biscuits. And that simple thing will help you lose weight. Um, so again, being occupied, um, because we have a very, we have a very big chance that people will double their weight because they are at home watching TV and eating biscuits. Yeah, watch TV, but empty it, get a drawer, clean a drawer out. You want two bags. You want a rubbish bag and a keep bag. Empty the drawer, tip it out on a big tray and sit there while you're watching telly and and sort your drawers out or sort your pencils out. If you if you're not if you're a colorist or anything, put your colors in a tin or move your tins around or look for things. So many things we can do. Um, because we need to do that. It's And we are going to feel so much better at the end of it. Anyway, sorry about that. Bit of a rant. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Bye, Rand. Um, so, back to colouring. So, I haven't got any bright colours down here, so I think this one's going to be a pink. And the, the, this one says it's a red. But, to me, it looks like a pink. So, I think we're going to have a pink. And again, if you pause, you'll end up with a with a block with a with a line. So I'm going to make that stronger. Oops! I'm very quickly, very quickly go over it because I can't rub scrub because that will take it away. So this is going to be quite a a bright pink. And I've still got quite a lot of pink on here, so I think let's have a look what we've got. I need something to be pinky, so I'm going to do the middle. So again, that's softened into a almost um, what do they call that pink? Bubblegum pink, that is. So from that, I've gone to bubblegum pink. Still got very pale pink on here. So what else have we got that we could have pink? I found a toothbrush. Oh, we could have a pink toothbrush. There we go. Pink toothbrush. I've still got pink on here. So we could do with um what can we do with this pale pink? There's a shell. It sh shouldn't really be pink, but you see it's still gonna be pink still got pink on there now i'm going to get rid of that last little bit um i think i want those to be yellow or orange i think so i've got orange down here pink what else are we going to do with this one uh pink with blue so we've got alice blue forget me not blue is a lovely color so we'll have a forget me not blue um next to this pink and you find with these peerless that some colors are like the forget me not if i just touch that it's still fairly pale is this one whereas the ones that look a bit waxier they're kind of really in your face so forget me not is is a little bit softer but still quite 
quite beautiful very very pale so now i have a, a very tiny bit of blue on here and got to think of where i'm going to put it i might just just take off that stark white there and now i know that my brush is clean so i, I do like those colors so again i've got pops of color and just keep flipping through these colors everybody can see that i've got a yellow so we have a yellow butterfly uh, there's a chrome yellow golden yellow we'll have a touch of golden yellow and um, this one can be golden yellow it's a beautiful gold is that almost a straw color and again to look at it it you almost think that that's the wrong side um the wrong side of the paint and that's another good reason to get to get it labeled because when i did the yellow ochre you can see it's got glue it's got glue on the top let me see that light there and that's glue because I thought that was the one that had the colour on it. And that was kind of old and grunky. So I didn't think that was the top and it was. So they are very strong, but their colours do not represent what they are. Um, and that's that's a big thing. Just a minute, guys. Just a second. right so alf is going to have a bath and he's going to be a new man <laughs> so he might come up a bit right so da, 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 da. and again and i don't want to think that it's you've got oh i, I don't put that color there or i don't put that color there um i'm just having a bit of a look to think well I haven't got a certain colour here. What colour shall I use? I'm going to probably do the the um, orange chrome here, I think. And I know it should be a paler colour, but again, why should it? It's, it's my colouring page. You can do what you like. Now, I've got some oranges, yellows down here. It's not quite... Um, a copper color but let's experiment and put it on here and we'll make the handle wood because it would be anyway and then we'll come back to it in a bit and do something else now i've got a tiny bit left of this color just a tiny bit just color the cone in so it's just slightly um So we could have a blue, a blue. So we've got sky blue, turquoise blue, butterfly wing blue, forget me not blue, and Alice blue. Alice blue is quite purpley. Um, and then we've got cobalt blue and deep blue here. Deep blue is like a French ultramarine as well. Very, very strong. I've got where it, oh, it's up here, that one. Um, so I think I'll go for turquoise blue. And again, I was looking here, not here, so, but never mind, it's fine. We will live with that one. And I need to put... I 
And I do have blue on here, but I'm just going to go through the screen and give it just a flat colour. Can't remember what, what it is, but just give it a bit of colour, just because I don't want to waste it. That colour in itself would have been lovely on another page, but I want this to be quite bright. Um, oh, whoa, 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 was at it again. So, and let me have a look. Let me see. Kind of blue we've got. We could have a geranium pink. And geranium pink is another one that's quite strong. be really careful we can go over it again if we want to and i've got a tip of that and i've colored the tip of that one by accident so that's that's a bit of a shame just put that on there to make that ice cream a different color So woo woo woo's at it. <laughs> She's at it again. Is the woo woo woo? Um, I think I'll have oops. Got a bit of domestic going on downstairs. I think we'll have the red rose one because I think that's quite a strong purpley pink. Purple is not strong enough really, but never mind. So now I do have some pink on here. I think I'm just going to go around the edge of this one. And there's still a tiny bit of pale on there. Let's see what we can find. Oh, okay, sand, um, sand pan, sand pat. Sorry, beg your pardon. <clears throat> I think I might have to make myself a coffee in a second. So all those butterflies have been done. Um, there's, oh, there's a big one here. So again, we want to um, have that deep blue. And we'll start at the bottom, work out. I have this beautiful purple blue. Just have to so as it gets paler, it gets it gets duller. It, it's not that very strong per it loses its purple, so I've lost a body, missed a body off there as well. Um Found a spoon, 
as you do. You grow a little tiny butterfly, but can't seem to find a tiny butterfly. I might just do the edges of this one. It, it's now gone to from a purple to a French ultramarine. And to a mauve, then it's, it does a very strange thing. These colours do very, these watercolours do strange things as they get paler. They don't do what you would normally think they should do. <clears throat> Which is, of course, absolutely wonderful for anybody that's when we're colouring in. And I am going over the line a little bit, but it would be impossible not with this brush. But the more careful you are, the, the, the nicer the the, the colours end up so sometimes you've just got to be that little bit careful and for all I say I don't like Viridian in traditional colours I do like it when we're using very bright colours because it's a beautiful green it's a beautiful bright green but it's more of what I call a fake green even though it is actually a traditional colour so now I've got green. Um, sometimes it works to have those pale colours and that's just taking off that stark white. So that's basically what I'm doing is just a red and again I should have turned the page over really but still doing quite well to stay within those lines these very strong colours And it's very therapeutic, this. It is really nice to be just, just kind of colouring and just keeping quiet. And look somewhere else where you could possibly use it. There's a bit of a boo boo there, but I'm sure when it's all coloured, you won't notice, even if you know there's a bit of a mistake there. I'm going to use that over there because it's going to look like it's a, it's a pan. And then I had something over here just to dull down so got a tiny little bit of a buckle but nothing's kind of gone through um and these are very strong colors you can't use these colors on your bible journaling unless you use them um in a palette and you really water them down but then that would defeat the object um so got to be really careful on what you use these because they are very, very, very strong, very strong colours. I think I'm going to go daffodil for this one. And you'll probably find some of the colours that you know, the Tate Modern, this is just 
colouring for therapy. Colouring because we like it, colouring because it's easy and colouring because it's occupying our time, which is what we need to do right now. My favourite tea rose red that I've used quite a lot of. And clean the brush. <clears throat> and you see that chrome green is obviously one of the ones that's not as strong as the others. in a green now so I need to put this green somewhere and if we could turn our teapot a bit yuck clean the brush <clears throat> and then let's see what else we want to do. Um, so we've done all the butterflies up here. Oh no, nope, found one there. So helitope. Now this is a, a very small space, is this? So It's going to be and now I've got this blood red colour. It's really strong as this one, so we could possibly use it somewhere else. And it's kind of a dark red there, but when you get up here, we're going kind of pale pink now, Lizzie and Crimson kind of colour now. And if we put some peacock blue there. And some of the colours you probably like, and some of you think, oh, actually, that doesn't work. So you will use other colours again, and some of them you won't. So it, you can also use this as an experiment as well. And so we could do with probably a green <clears throat> down here. So we've got Viridian again. So I think we could have hunter's green which is a more traditional green i think here so um we'll put this one in the middle And I do have some green on here, so we need to pop it somewhere. So we've got odd leaves kicking about somewhere, floating about all these odd petals or leaves. So we can we can use this green to kind of fill these in a bit. Oh, 
all sorts of things kicking about. It's, it's the time to pick them off and colour them in. I still got a very pale green, so I've gone from that one to this one. And can just make that green and change that colour. And there's a bit of colour left on the brush, but now it's almost gone. So we've got another butterfly there. So again, I've got a pink, an orange, and a blue, no yellow. So we look for um, a gamboge. And we'll do a gamboge butterfly. Still got some bright yellow. So this one could be yellow as well. But it's now a paler yellow. And there's still some yellow, so I'm just going to go over this. Um, so go back to that one, we could have a cobalt blue, which is going to be very strong. So I've turned this over because I've got a bit of a curl on here. So if I turn it over, it's going to be a little bit... finer to get in those little spaces and I must have kept a bit of that yellow on because the cobalt blue is now turned to a dull green but that's fine and I can live with that so now I'll use that last bit of colour up touch that again because I just want I do want it to be quite strong so that is a beautiful alien very orange red and I seem to have a pale orange still Again, get rid of that star colour. I think I'm going to use that colour for the inside of this butterfly. So I hope this isn't too boring, guys. I hope you just see just how kind of therapeutic this is. And just probably now it's quite pale. I can use it. Excuse me, somewhere else. I think I'm going to go over his beak. So it's a bit of an orangey beak. And, um, I'll have a deep blue in this one. To show that's a very rich colour. So there's ways of 
going to I might do that one the same because it looks it does look quite similar, doesn't it? That one. So we've got uh, Myrtle Green. And again, if you're not sure what colour that one is, you can always just pop it on there. So it's more of a traditional green is this. Um, so maybe a touch more. Kind of like that strong green, almost like a hooker's green. I think this one, metal green, is like a hooker's green. Although there is a hooker's, uh, there's a hunter's green. Um, and so this brush is behaving really well, considering the spaces that I'm trying to colour. We'll have a bit of a pale green going on there. So we've got from very strong to very pale. And I think we'll have purple. We have a dragonfly there, so I'm not sure what colour I'm going to use that. I keep forgetting that. We'll use amethyst. And that is a real... Aubergine purple, this one, real deep purple. So my daughter's got a little car and she's just decided that she's going to clean the car. And that's another little job that we never get to do, so... I have a tiny bit of purple on here, so I think I'm just going to go and take it somewhere else. And it's still just there. So as I say, this this touch and go system is it's very quiet. It really does, um, it does chill you out. It does take you to a very peaceful place, which I say we, we, we kind of need to be in, in this time. So I've got Royal Crimson, which I've not used yet, so um, possibly... Use Royal Crimson. Again, it's very similar to the Blood Red, but it's when it gets paler that it changes. Now, I'm quite impressed with this little brush.
Somehow I need an edge for that one. Let's have a look at our greens. There's a peacock blue. Peacock blue doesn't. Hmm. I have rubbing something blue. I can't read what I've put. Something blue rubbing. Oh, Robin Egg Blue, that's what this one is, Robin Egg Blue. I'll just do the edge of this one. So you can you can colour this in lots of different ways. You can you can colour everything all at once, or you can colour things different times. I think I'm gonna have um Colour there, and I do have a, some colour on here. So again, I'm just going to try and put it somewhere. Clean the brush, and we've got brilliant yellow. So I've got two yellows there that need kind of something putting around them. So we're probably halfway because the bird, the bird is going to take up the most of it. But once we've done all the butterflies, I think we're going to be almost there. Um, cobalt blue. But I left that little bit of green on. I've got almost a hooker's green. So again, if you wanted to do the colour mixing, cobalt blue with brilliant yellow would give a gorgeous, rich, deep green. Almost like a forest green. So I've got a bit of that left to go around the edges of there. Clean the brush. So you can get some grungy colours if you don't clean the brush. So we'll have um, this red one here, I'm not sure what it's called, I have to look it up. So just gently dabbing, stroking the page. Very simple. You can do this all day. There's no, there's no strain on your hand. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice went a bit squeaky then. So we could possibly draw some dots. Clean the brush. Oh, 
house sounds is my my, <coughs> my three hens are out roaming roaming the the backyard. <coughs> yes, they can have a good old uh, scratch about, can't they? So we've got most of the colours all the way around. So um, again, I've got a little bit of a kind of a flat surface going on, so I can really get into some tiny tiny spaces which is pretty good for this little brush i think it is anyway i think it's a pretty good little brush um now i've got a bit of color on here so and i might leave the stars white um building a bit of color on that got butterfly wing which we can put on there so as I say this is a, a very very peaceful way to work and it is something that you can do all day. Amethyst. So again, you can put a, a purple next to a turquoise colour and it'll work. So I, I love that, especially when we're doing these. We can, we can kind of mix up the colours and use colours that we wouldn't normally, but we're not even thinking about as the colours really. We just want some bright colours for the... for the butterflies but indirectly we are putting quite obscure colours I might have to forget that <laughs> white dot just might have to forget that I've still got quite a lot in the brush as well, so that's quite nice. So we've um, just thinking what type of colour to put in that one. Just 
just that little bit. Pale that one. And again, really tiny space is this. So this little brush is, is kind of really holding its own. It's really doing quite well. So there's probably half a dozen. I've got those. I think I want to do those um, cadmium colours. I'll clean the brush this time. Pick up chrome yellow and push that colour about. And the same with the bottom one. Don't think there's any more. There's a painting of a mountain scene there. And um, deep yellow, I might just put around there. Is anybody else colouring in their in their books? Um, clean the brush because these as I say these are really really strong so with that daffodil yellow using a slightly different yellow it completely changes everything to have a little bit of a pale. Again, that's almost a flesh colour, flesh tint. So we know if we use the blood red colour to be very pale, we can get a flesh colour down here. These are fleshy colours from an orange and a red. Whereas the pinks just go that bit further. So I'll use rose red for this one. As I say, I don't have the pink colours. 
some of these are in the pink colours and some aren't. So um, I don't think I have the full set of peerless. Um, but what I've done is I'll, I'll be online. I'm going to count the colours I've got and work through them and label them when I get them so I can I see if I can order them separate, the ones that I don't have, rather than buying a full set and then being clobbered with uh, import tax. Because it's not nice. <laughs> it's not nice. So what else can we fill in? I think I might like that purple there. And again, we can put a pale colour next to a strong colour and we can get away with it. Whereas normally you wouldn't want to do that. You'd want to use the same tonal value. But I think it works. It works quite well. In this scenario of, of kind of butterflies, I do think it works well. So can clean the brush and we go to peacock. mountain green around this one so you've got to try not to do exactly the same but I suppose if you do duplicate certain colours it's not the end of the world so I want to finish the butterflies off before I make myself a coffee but I'm and fairly very fast. So again, clean the brush. Got a marigold, which I think I'm going to put over here. It's a lovely warm yellow, that one. Possibly amethyst. And you can turn the brush around if you think it's not going to give you that. That colour. just that a bit because we do want those butterflies to stand out um, and then I think we can have um, a 
clean the brush. And I can have a light green. a couple of bodies that I've uh, forgotten. This colour, so that's a blue. I don't know what colour path, caterpillar we want. We could use that inside that one. There'll always be a few butterflies that we miss because it's the nature. I think I was using the sepia brown. So we've got a little body there and we have the body there. And now I've lost where the little body was now. I've just seen one that I hadn't coloured in that one. I missed that one. Do our little caterpillar. He's he's finished. So we have to. I think we'll do this in the clouds next. I'm going to work backwards. So I've got a lamp black and the pearl grey. I think I'm going to use the lamp black. Um, and kind of. work out where the darkness wants to be. And again, Kirby's been good giving us that information that we need. You know, this has got to morph into a warm colour for the bird. So you've got to be a bit careful that we don't get too bogged down with this. And you remember what I said about lamp black being a warm black? It's, it's not a Payne's grey as such. It's a little bit warmer than that. So we can do all the darker bits. And then we can go over those and they become the pale bits oh sandpat says i started a kirby, kirby book again and we'll post on instagram oh thank you thank you well we do our best we keep keep on keep coloring just keep keep plodding along but that's what I do love about this little system is it's really simple you know I'm just touching on a little bit of card there's no water to spill um so it's brilliant for kids brilliant for grannies 
only for people that are that I'm terrible for knocking things over and making a mess. Uh, so it's it's really really good for me. So my daughter's just said she said it yesterday, but um, to she wanted us to to colour together. She said, "Why don't you? We'll do some painting downstairs." So that's what I might do now. That's a mountain, and it's a cloud. So now is the time to kind of, I think by the time it gets to here, um, that should be bird-like actually. I've made a boo-boo actually, that should be bird-like. Really thinking about it. Because this is the tail of the bird. So perhaps I should have worked work the other way around. Um, I had intended on doing clouds rather than than the bird, but perhaps I should have done it the other way. But um, it'll be fine. It'll just. Uh, See, that's bird now. That's definitely bird. And that's cloud. And that's cloud. So you can turn your brush to the pointy bit so you can kind of get into there. So that's cloud. And this is cloud morphing into a wing. So is this. This is and then we've got some little tail bits here that Found a wooden spoon again that I lost. There was a wooden spoon there. So thank you for stopping by, guys. Hope everybody's keeping calm and colouring. I don't always make it every day. I do try, but I don't always make it every day. I'll try and put a few videos out so people can chill out and... color
There's a toothbrush. I think we're getting to the bit where I could do the bird now and lots of things are going to pop up that I've missed because that's the nature of a Kirby's. Just now merging into bird now. Oh, it's a bit of a cloud there. I think possibly now could be the time to do the the bird and then where it's going to be dark and the dark cloud where it's going to be pale so you can always come back to it but I think I've got that so far Oh, yes, we're a lot warmer today. Um, I'll open the window now, the guys have done that. I'm going to make myself a quick coffee. I'm going to do that before I finish the bird off. Um, I'm trying to do about three hours. So we've got half, got 25 minutes to finish the bird. So um, I'm going to pop that back into there. Um, let's say I'm re revamping that. I'm just going to leave that onto there for a thing. Must make myself another drink. I just have to put... Um, Oh, I shall. I'll manage for half an hour. I think. Oh, needs bath. No, 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 no. Yeah, we've got lovely sunny weather at the moment. Whoopsie! Nearly fell off the seat. <laughs> so I could do with the warm sepia. So we've got sepia. We've got a burnt umber for the bird. Um. Bismarck Brown is quite nice and um, I think I'll do sepia brown. So I'm going to touch there. It's going to be quite pale here. It'll be quite strong. So I'm going to touch it there and start lower down here. So if I kind of make a boo boo. It's fine, and if I'm very careful, I can now manipulate those other colours so I can morph it back into a bird. to make them a bit a little bit warmer now. So possibly if 
very carefully take that further down so we know that's the tail and then work in here keep our toothbrush And it is a quite a strong sepia, is this one? Sepia brown. So if I don't want any highlights. There's a little creature that I forgot. We might get a little bit of buckling now. Oh hi Brandy, welcome to Bunny Designs. Um, we're working with the Peerless, Peerless watercolours um, that I've got in my little book of watercolours. Um, but I'm revamping it at the minute so that's why I've taken a lot of them out. Um, They are quite, quite beautiful. I found another kind of a, I'm going to make that back into a cloud, I think. And again, I'm just activating the tip because if we do any more, and then if we go back, we get that highlight that we want. So we've got the dark. Then we go back. Look at the highlight. One thing we've got to remember is not to scrub too much though because it won't like it. So we can Use the, the dark that Kirby has crush hatched and hatched and then go over it. We can and then get that highlight as well. that we want to keep so remember what we say about the darks the darks always look darker next to a highlight and the lights always look lighter next to a dark so we've got a light one there so we put a dark next to it And you just have to take it bit by bit. You know, like doing it fairly quickly. But one thing we've got to do is try not to scrub too much. 
because that's when it, we get our pages destroyed. So it, it's very quick, this method. It is very quick, um, but it's it's fairly easy. Again, we're just picking up a little bit of colour. Again, if we put something dark next to a light, it's going to stand out more. Again, Kirby's done all that for us, so we can just activate that a little bit. But remember, we've got to be a little bit careful. because all that water is not going to be healthy for the page. Now, we can judge where we've been. We can pick up a paler one here. So this is quite pale. So I know if I go here, it's going to be quite pale. Whereas this is going to be quite dark. So you've got a little bit of a highlight going on. It's never easy on a big space, no matter what type of um, paper you're on or what kind of colour you've got. So it's always going to be a little bit different because, again, it's a big space of water and we're scrubbing, so it's not going to like it. Now we can use that little tiny area just to get rid of that stark white. And then Found another another cloud under there, and again same brush this time. Strokes. So it's really versatile. This little brush it really is, and we are getting more water, but we don't want too much. We still don't want too much because we will damage our pages, and we don't want to do that. Still trying to just manipulate that colour. If we 
go back to where we've been before, we can just drag a little bit of colour out. So now this really is kind of touch and go. And you can't really mess about too much. You've got to use the big strokes for this particular area. Whereas before we've been doing lots of delicate little strokes. This is where we have to go for it because the colours will dry in streaks. Got a bit of a buckle, but considering the fact we're doing big spaces here. And you get to know where to go on the pad where you've used it before. You can get a medium tone where it's very pale. Where you've not used it before, you're going to get a darker colour. Again, keep your brush clean because it will dry out eventually. But we don't want too much water. So manipulate that out. Just pick up the colour that we need. And I've missed a couple of butterflies. Again, strong colour for there. It was another butterfly without a body somewhere. It was a butterfly without a body. Lost it now, but just reiterate that one and that one and that one. Need a little bit of grey. I've got two butterflies to do, and then I need the. the warm black to do a few more clouds I've missed two clouds so again pick up where it's dark and then just make the highlight and there was another one somewhere again this is where you go back And we've got a flame there. It's a butterfly here. Oh gosh, this you this starts as I open the window. <laughs> I've got a couple of butterflies to do. So thanks for stopping by guys. I say I will try to do a couple a couple of hours every day, three hours every day. Put a little bit of darker blue on that one. I think that might go on all afternoon now, so just one or two things to do. That was the um I always leave the little creatures white. I always leave the little creatures right, right, well, <laughs> so, so that's finished. Um, I don't know what it looks like on the screen. Um, I quite enjoyed doing it. Um, very quick, well, three hours. Um, and I've got one or two things to do. There's a butterfly and there's that little bit there. Um, but I think this noise will probably drive us insane. So um, he's obviously been in for his lunch and come out now. <laughs> so there's a little butterfly. Um, clean the brush and just put um, a little bit of, of Alice blue on the outside there. Oops. I'm rushing, so I've made a mistake. And... We'll have a pink one of those. 
with a kite with pink tails. So I do always leave the little creatures white. It's very rare that I do a background. Uh, there's a toothbrush. In fact, I could just put a little bit of sepia behind that toothbrush to make it pop out. So thanks, guys, for stopping by. That's the Derek watercolour brush with my peerless watercolours that are in my little book of watercolours. And uh, poster size, Animorphia. Imagine Morphia, beg your pardon. So thanks, guys. Have a wonderful afternoon and uh, keep colouring. Keep safe and keep colouring, guys. Oh, hi, AC. <laughs> I was just about to go. Just bear with me a second and get rid of get rid of the noise. Just open the window. He has got much hedge to do. We've all got fifty foot hedges. <laughs> it's, it's a bit of a feat. Um, and it's dried. That's how that's how how undamp it is. If that makes any sense. Um. So the, what I was going to do, I'm going to put that back in there because I always forget where I got it from. Um, so that's with the peerless um, and that's with ordinary watercolours. So you can do it with watercolour. You don't have to have very strong colours, but these are quite, quite well pigmented. So they, they are lovely to use. Um, I just bought myself a drink, guys. I'll just talk about my little book of watercolours a bit more. Um, and, and how I'm going to fix them in. Just bear with me a second, guys. I've got to make myself a hot drink because the mouth's dried up. <laughs> it's dried up. Um, I've got a small makeshift kitchen in my bedroom because I'm keeping away from the children. So it's rather messy. It's rather messy in my um, in my kitchen. In fact, it's very messy. It's a it's a tip. <laughs> but if I show you, that's my makeshift kitchen. So I've got my kettle there, making my thing. I've got the two Instapots things. Um, this is my thing. I have to sort out in my room. That's my Instapot um, that I make porridge in. And then I have a big one that I make a uh, stew in. That's a pressure cooker one. I've got my water filter and my little pot in the middle. Um, and in the cupboard at the top there, I've got food. Over there, I've got food, tea bags and things. <laughs> um, the studio isn't finished yet. There's some sketchbooks, the Bible journaling. And that's the desk. It needs a big sort out. Um, and then I've got at the other side all the um, all the other pencils and things. And again, that's not quite sorted out either, because uh, when you're streaming, you don't have much time. But that's what I was saying about having time to do things. It's going to work out quite well because we've got more time to do things. And that's why my, my, my daughter just brought the coffee pot back, but I still can't you touch it because I've not cleaned it yet. So I hope that makes sense. And I don't have a fridge. I could do with a fridge in here. So I've got long life oat milk, which is lousy in coffee, I have to say. It's a bit drastic in coffee. Have you got any questions? Oh dear. So I've got my window my window open and I've got my furry dressing gown on because it's cold in here. <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, so I put I, this was my my second attempt at the, the, my little book of watercolors, um, and I revamped it and made bigger squares. But I didn't like this horrible plastic, so I pulled everything out and put them in this photo um, this photo box. There's a Paper Chase photo album. <laughs> it's on a slant. No, it was me crackers. Um, but you can buy vintage ones. This is a vintage one. And this one, I've got my Derwent watercolour pencils. And these are in two colours. And the reason I've done that is when I'm Bible journaling, sometimes I flip. I flip from the Derwent my Derwent watercolour pencils, I flip into the ink tents and the ink tents will go through your Bible pages. So I really need to stay here um, in the 72 Derwent watercolour pencils. And so um, I've decided to make myself another book um, and I've got my Neos. They're not, they're not stuck in. I've just put them temp where they're going. Um, and I'm cutting, I'm cutting open these sleeves here um so you can see they're a bit shorter so i'm cutting them down and then i'm opening them up so i get three i get three plastics i get one here one in the middle and then i get another one because you'd put two photographs in here so there is a plastic between um which is actually there if you can see it there so what I'm doing is cutting across the top and cutting down the side, and that's giving me three plastics. So that's the first one. This is slightly thicker. The middle one is thicker. So this would have a photograph in it, and then this one would have a photograph in it. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting down this side, and then I'm cutting across the top, and that's giving me three pages. So I'm putting the colours across with the plastic in between. So I've got more space and it is quite stuffed because I put my uh, peerless in here. Now I'm going to cut them in half, I think, and put, put two. Um, put two on a page. And then have a colour guide because you need a colour guide with these. I mean, this is the colour. That's the actual colour. You can't tell what that does. So we're going to have a name and a colour. And there'll be two colours on each page. So um, I'll probably be cutting a square off and then I can put that in my other book. And the reason for that is... I want this to be like my original book with thousands and thousands of colours in it. So I've got my my Derwent, 72 squares of Derwent watercolour pencils, 72 squares of my Derwent ink tense pencils. I've got my 24 um, Derwent graphite tint. I've got 100 and I think it's about 120 Neo Colour 2 squares. Um, I've got um, the peerless to put in here, not the peerless, um, I'm putting some other colours in here as well to fill that middle bit up. And then at the back, I've got my peerless colours here, but I think I've got about 20 missing. So I think I'm going to see if I can buy them separately and then I can fill, fill this bit out. And then in the middle, I'm going to be putting my watercolours in. So all these, so she, I've got another minute. I'll be showing you how to do this. All these tubes I will be transferring to the to the extra wet strength um, paper. And it's got to be extra wet strength um, 
because it's been sized and it won't disintegrate. Don't do it on watercolour paper because watercolour paper sucks up the colour and the water and we want the colour on top so that when we touch it with a brush, we can have it. And that's got to be sea white. Sea white. If you haven't got as many colours as me, this is my original one that I used, the photo album, which was £1.50. And I really loved that one. And I, I, met, I bent the... The, the back to be wider and so it was that thick um and I labeled it I'm going to you need to label where things are so where things start where things begin um because you end up with some gorgeous colors but the nicest thing is that you could use a green or a turquoise from your neos and you can use a yellow from your derwents um and then you could use and um, a pink from your ink tens pencils and you couldn't do that if you had all your unless you had everything spread out and what I've got in here is impossible for you to see at one time the good thing about this as well is that especially for the ink tense you've got a color guide because sometimes when you look at the end of the ink tens pencils you can't see these potential colors can only see the one color so i use it as a color guide when i use my ink tense pencils and my ink tense blocks um because my daughter's just given me these back actually and i've had to bleach wipe them because obviously she's been out and about so i bleach wipe this before i've touched it but when you're looking at these colors here you see she's had to do that when you look at these colors you don't have a clue what's going on but if you look at uh, number 2121 um, which I have no idea what it is so let's look further down here uh, 2120 two, which is that one that one is grey Gray, gray, um, something gray is that one. Two, two, zero, zero, which is that one, is black. Uh, 21. Oh, she's got she dropped something on that one. I can't see what that one is now. Um, 2010 is that one, which is Payne's gray. Well, you can't tell that from here. Um, the same with either even some of these beautiful teal colours down here. I know that if I touch some of this colour with a paintbrush, I can get these colours. So 1, 2, 20 is um, a green aqua, aquamarine. Now, the Derwent Inktense blocks are not named, but they have a number on them. And she's turned them all around. They all have a number. And what I've done is where it says England, I've used that as a as a wetting little space. And at the other end, you have a number. And that number is the same as your ink tense pencil. And your ink tense pencil has a name on it. Um, but even if you just have the blocks and you don't have the pencils, Go online, find the Derwent Ink Tense Pencil Color Guide, and you can you can write these numbers next to these these names, and you can do a color swatch because you do need a color swatch for the Ink Tense pencils and the blocks. Oh, thank you, Pamela. So again, you know, looking at these colors, even if you look here, I don't look here, I look here because this is the colour guide. This is the, this is the one that tells me if I pick this pencil up or this ink tense block up, I'm going to get all these colour cards. So even though there's only 72 pencils, I've got 200, I've got 170, sorry, the 72 different pencils. I have 720 colours because each pencil and each block give at least 10 shades. So if you look down here, I know that I want 1740, which is underneath. I put these little tags in, these little butterfly tags. I made these. Um, 
so um orange earth is 17040 um which actually 17040 should be down here somewhere i think Oh, that's one two forty. That's one two forty. Wait a minute. Um, I just got. Oh, I have them the other way. She's turned a lot of these upside down. I'm going to have to. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to rejiggle them a bit. Yeah, she's. She's. She has used them for her. Her uni. Um, but I do need mine the right way around because they'll drive me insane. Oops. I don't think she meant to bring them. But the, the nicest thing is normally my things are absolutely perfect. Um, but she's actually using them, so that's fine. So 1910. Oh, oh let's do that one. That's 1920. Um, and 1920 is uh, Madda Brown so by looking at that one you can't tell but if you look at this one all those colors are available if i use this one um so that's why it's a really good idea to make a, a color swatch of these i did try to put these into a, a box like this i think you can do it with a pastel you need something to grab the color really um but again if you've got the color guide you can use this and we really don't want to take these out because they, they get dropped and broken and all sorts of things. But, yeah, she's had to do a colour guide because but she's done a flat one. She's not done one that shows the different tones. Let me put the lid on these before I lose them. So I do love my Inktense blocks, I have to say. And again, if you've only got the 72 Derwent watercolour pencils, potentially you've got 720 because although that's number 29 ultramarine blue, there's there's at least 10 shades there. And also remember, we can, if you've got the nice plastic, which I didn't have in my other book, you can touch these two here and you can mix colours. You'd have to wipe it with a baby wipe and then dry it before you shut the book. But you can mix all these colours together because every page has its own palette. You just have to make sure it's cleaned and dried before you shut the book. Um, so the touch and go method you can use or you can use it tradi traditionally for mixing colours. Um, so the other thing I was going to show was if you only have Neocolor 2s and you don't have a lot, you can scratch. Um, and these are quite easy what you have to do is look at the number and you can re revamp these. There's a video called Revamping Your Watercolour Book. And what that means is um, you, you go to this colour, you find the crayon and you scratch over and then you revamp it so it, it's full of colour again. Um, there's a couple of videos on that. So once you've, if you use the extra wet strength paper, it lasts you years because I'm down to paper now. So I can scratch over the top once it's dried. I've got to leave it to dry for a couple of days if I've used it. I can then scratch the colour over and then this book is full again. So you can revamp. But if you use watercolour or sketchbook paper, normal, it will disintegrate. You've got to use extra wet strength. Um, and they're about... They're about um, A5 and 99p. Um, bigger RA4, but it will say extra wet strength and sea white sketchbooks make them and it's sized, so it's called extra wet strength. Hope that makes sense, guys. Does that make sense? Um, but you don't have to buy a new one. I like the paper chase one because I like the plastic. I like the plastic. I also like the vintage plastic. The vintage plastic is a nicer one as well. If you can hear, it's, it's more like acetate. But it, we don't want to waste a lot of money. And the easiest thing to use is a photo album. 
sometimes you can buy vintage ones for 50p um the ones that i bought here it was an experiment and it didn't work because i don't like the plastic i don't like the plastic so i haven't used the book so sometimes it, it this was a couple of pounds you've got to go for something that's nicer but these paper chase ones are perfect because the plastic is really nice um, and that was my original one that I used. Have you got any questions? I'm just going to have a mouthful of tea, guys. So it is getting quite chunky. As I say, I will be cutting those down, but they've got the names on them. They're, most of mine are named. I've had to put some of them in there, but I'm missing some of them. So I think I will go online and because they they work really well on the touch and go system, um, I'm a bit of an obsession when it comes to full full sets. And I think this particular one, I've got the hair one. I've got the hair one um, and then I've got the bonus one, but I'm, I'm not sure. And I've got the original one, but I think there's another couple. And there's some pink ones. I haven't got those. I'm, I'm not really that bothered. I would like them. But again, if it's going to be 60 odd pounds for um, import tax, then I have to admit defeat and say no. So there's two because they're going on that, that side. They're not going on the front. Remember, because I want the yellows to be together. So I've got some i've got six very bright yellows i've got um eight oranges i've got um quite a few eight ten twelve twelve reds um i've got eight purples sorry beg your pardon i've got four purples um i've got uh four purpley blues so then I've got another eight blues. I've got almost 16 greens, olive greens and browns. And then we've got the hair colours. Uh, there's the hair colours. So, you know, I've got enough anyway. And then if you want to kind of use them and mix the colours, you can do. So... I should have enough in this book. I did want to try and get 10,000 colours in here, um, but I've decided that I'd rather have a book that I want to use than one that has 10,000 colours in it that I'm not going to use. Um, these are the same size, but what I'm going to do is bend this spine so it's round, so I might use it better. Um, and if you bend it out a bit more, that outer case goes in but it makes this rounded and it makes it so it's fatter so you can get something in it and then i have a hair bubble around it normally um but i didn't like this plastic so i've not used this book for a while and it's purely down to the this horrible cheapy plastic it was an experiment and it didn't work so i've gone back to um paper chase because the plastic is the best and we're not cutting down acetate cutting down plastic all we're doing is cutting the sides off uh, if you didn't have enough you wouldn't need to do that if you just wanted to stick a page in between you could do that so there's lots of different methods depending on how many colors you want to get in there so i hope that made a bit of sense so i don't know uh i'm out of touch with who comes on when and what happens and I don't know what time we're on at the minute. What time are we on, guys? I do miss my granddaughter because I can't see her. Oh, it's nearly, it's nearly, um, it's nearly three o'clock. So there might be other people on online, um, not online, on thingy, <laughs> on YouTube live. So thanks for stopping by, guys. Um, That's another one that has really nice plastic in it. So I'll be using that one. The other way you could do it, if you didn't want them all in one, is to have little um, different um, 
photo albums, one would have the Derwent ink tents, one would have the Derwent pencils, um, uh, watercolours, and one would have the peelers. So you could build up your books and have them like a little library and then just take one out if you wanted. The reason I love it is that you can you can use a green peerless with a red near colour two, whereas normally you wouldn't have your near colour twos out and the peerless and the don't watercolour pencils and the ink tense pencils. Uh, so you wouldn't have all those things out, but they're available to use the colours in your colour book. This is for touch and go uh, in here. If I was doing some other artwork, then I'd probably use uh, this, the, the, the scratch method where I, I scratch colours on and then I mix them and you can get some beautiful fine work. But if you are using them as a touch and go system, then it works quite well. So thanks for joining me, guys. I think three hours is enough as a as a video. Um, I might try and make some more as I'm going along uh, because I am in isolation. And I think hubby, oh god, my ankle's bad. I think hubby will um, probably be puddling along. I do have another book which I think is quite interesting, um, which is my fake Hobonichi, which I made a couple of years ago. I've lost the cover for it. I've put it somewhere. Uh, but this is about patterns, and one page has got. Uh, one page has got scratches in it. The other one's got um, one page has got squares. The other one's plain, and it's layout paper, which is like the Chinese paper. I think there's six hundred pages in here. Um, so I altern alternated them. So I had um, and the nicest thing is that even though that's the plain paper, you can see through it and you can follow the patterns. So I've, I've been making patterns up. I've been using shapes. Um, um, oh, it's a chemistry stencil. Um, you can use, you can doodle either using the shapes. So again, I want to tell people you don't have to go out and buy expensive uh, color books you can make shapes uh, this particular one uh, is cross stitch all cross stitch um, st stitches um, I think it's Jacobean is a stitch that's in on squares so there's all sorts of gorgeous patterns that we can do um, so I drew around it and then I just traced the, the square behind it but then when I lift it off that's what you've got. Again, more cross stitch patterns, um, doodles, just playing about with the watercolour. Um, I always go back to my little flowers. So I'm going to start to work in here a bit longer. There's some more cross stitch stitches, which make perfect patterns. Um, and then just some doodles. Just playing about and and I know they say that Zen Tangle is supposed to be exact but we don't want for exact we want we want it for therapy we want to just doodle some things work some things don't work uh, messing about with paper these are some of my original um, shapes flowers that I used to doodle so I'm I kind of like these so these are my uh, this is my design that I did when I was a student, when I was about 16, 17. So there's some quite nice designs in there that, again, just doodling and then colouring the, colouring them out. And I think that's what we need to do. We need to kind of de-stress and not give ourselves things that we've got to do immaculate, just play play about some things will work and some things won't just have to play but the hobonichi one is really good because the colors don't go through these these this is my watercolor thing but they're not going through they show through but they don't go through so they show through 
um, but they don't go through. But the dirt watercolour pencils definitely do not, definitely do not go through. So I was going to show how to make a Hobonichi um, with some simple stitches and patterns and things. A lot of them I don't like, but then all of a sudden some I think, oh, I quite like that. So, and when you've got the option of the squares and no squares, you can do anything. Um, it's another one of my doodles is the um, the flowers. So you can do all sorts. Now, if you look, that's gone through because um, if you go back and then you go back to the same point, you will go through. If you draw once, lift your pen up. And this is my rotary pen with Indian ink in it, permanent Indian ink, um, which is a very strong pen. And yet normally it doesn't go through. It, it did on these occasions because when you go back round, you're touching the same spot six or seven times. But normally, when you just draw normally, there's nothing. Um, so I kind of like that. And again, Hobonichis are quite expensive and I'm a tight Yorkshire lass. So I love the fact that this is the Copic stitch, the Japanese binding stitch. And when you open it, it's flat. Every page is flat. And that is something that's quite good, especially if it's got that many pages. You know, it's I think it's about 600 and some on here. There's a lot of pages. There might be a video on this, I think. Um, and the cardboard is from the, the edge of the, the book that I used. So have a lovely afternoon, guys. And um, I'm going to play my Hobonichi, I think, this afternoon. <laughs> Got a new I have a new brush pen, so I've been playing with the a new brush pen. So that's going to be my thing: a brush pen and my little book of watercolors. So have a lovely afternoon, guys. Anybody got any suggestions or questions or anything to ask me? Pop it in the thing below. Any color books that I have that you'd like me to color? So have a wonderful afternoon and stay safe, guys. Thanks for watching.